Support for Iowa Catholic Radio and Be Not Afraid comes from Ball Team, your builder of all faith-based construction needs. Learn more at buildwithball.com. Now, hear the good news and be not afraid. Good morning. Welcome to Be Not Afraid, Iowa Catholic Radio. Good morning, Father. Good Jay. morning, Father. Let us begin. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty and merciful God, may no earthly undertaking hinder those who set out in haste to meet your Son. But may our learning of heaven wisdom grant us admittance to his company. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. And the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. It's very interesting that many symbols that we have in our churches for this season Advent, obviously purple color, that is related to uh, Lent season. And also we had uh, Advent read, Advent read. Why we had Advent read? So Advent wreaths are actually one of the newer features of sort of church okay. life. Um, they, the, the, the way we have them now um, it only goes back like maybe 150 years. Like this is not some deep-rooted ancient. ancient tradition exactly. But the use of wreaths, like in general, both in church and in kind of devotional things and whatever, that does go way, 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 way back. So you'll sometimes hear Lutherans uh, try and lay claim to the Advent wreath because there was a a, a Lutheran pastor in Germany who initiated the first sale of them that we know of. Um, I'm not trying to make that sound more mercenary than it is. That's just the only reason we know about it is because he sold them to the the families of the parish as a way to help them mark the days coming up to to Christmas. Um, But the use of uh, of wreaths with candles is certainly older and, and was probably used to mark off the days. But more likely than not, the original Advent wreath had six candles on it because Advent used to be six weeks long to match with Lent. Okay. I mean, respectfully, to don't hurt any of our non-Catholic Christian denomination, why Lutherans have been intervening that in that uh, Because process? of the—no, uh, uh, no, the, the, be, be, because it was one of their guys that marketed them, so that's good. But okay. um, it's also because of the uh, the traditional shape that the wreath has taken. So it's okay. usually drawn from a fir or an evergreen tree or a spruce. Um, and those are those are trees that are native to uh, to that part of Europe. What about Christmas tree? Yeah, so the Christmas tree has an independent uh, origin. Um, okay, that, 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 that's distinct, um, and it's related to the the the, the Jesse tree, um, oh. which it which did not originally look like the same tree. So, what all of this is are, are different ways of people marking time in preparation for a big feast or event. And so, so we utilize the shape of the traditions that we've been given um, and perhaps modify if it comes to make sense. Uh, uh, let's say um, a national disaster uh, was to happen uh, uh, the day before Our Lady of Guadalupe. Correct. That would necessarily change the way that we experience Advent and Our Lady of Guadalupe from here on out. Like we would just have to take it. You'd, you'd have to mark a different day on the calendar or something, right? So – so the same kind of thing is how we've got these traditions. So we receive the tradition that we've got, um, and, 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 and we use it fundamentally to focus our heads and our hearts and even our feelings as we prepare for his coming at the Great Feast. At the beginning of our segment, I mentioned to you that this kind of decoration and liturgical items add to the formal decoration of the, of the church. Some people asking if it's uh, polite or liturgical valid to use the Christmas tree at the altar, like uh, Advent read, for instance, or nativity, for instance. I mean, there's there's very little directives as to what kind of plants you can have in the sanctuary, um, and that's because, understandably, different plants would be available in different parts of the world. Okay. Um, I think trying to make a Christmas tree in the sanctuary after the manner of the Christmas tree at your family's home. So you've got like a tree with lights and gifts and ornaments. That's probably not a good call, but I don't know that I've ever actually seen that. Um, what, what tends to happen more often is because spruce for evergreen are the plants that are still alive in this part of the world when this happens. Those are the kinds of plants that you use to decorate um, and poinsettias because they, they last in the winter too. But, uh, but it's just the way that we still show Things are alive, even in the cold. 
but obviously nativity must be the center of our celebration. Obviously, Advent, Advent read it's part of the uh, nomination for each uh, Sunday of Advent, but the nativity is the concrete center of our celebration based on the nativity yeah, for the, Jesus the, Christ. The, the feast of the nativity is, the nativity crash um, isn't and needn't be, Right, so 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 uh, the this is a place where at Christ the King, I actually can't do like physically, can't do what the rubrics tell me to because there's not a space in the church to make it. Oh, okay. Work. Okay. Um. So the rubrics presume that the nativity scene uh, during Christmas tide is not in the sanctuary. Oh. Um. They because what they're imagining is a. a is is a church with either side altars or alcoves or something like that. Correct. And in history, of course, that's where these nativity, that's where nativity scenes came from, was they were originally like side altars. And you'd often have one of the nativity that looked like a cave. Correct. And one of the resurrection that looked like a cave. And there were devotions wow. attached to Christmas and Easter that, that reflected all these. That's not the case in most of this part of the world, which is why they tend to be somewhere near the front where people can easily see. My problem is, because my sanctuary is an L, if I put a nativity scene any place but where I do, I I can't get people to communicate. Somebody, so, so, somebody, somebody would be missing, right. wait, missing that. So, but the, but but the point is right that the 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 Advent wreath, especially at home, uh, the the Christmas tree later also at home, and the nativity and the nativity scene at home are visual cues, especially for families with young children to connect. What happens at home with what happens at church? Oh, nice! Right. So you've so so connection. so we've got an Advent wreath at at home and at church, maybe at school if we go to Catholic school. But otherwise, you definitely wouldn't have an Advent wreath at school, and that tells the kids something important about uh, about the connection between these places: Christmas tree at at church, Christmas tree at home, uh, uh, ad, uh, nativity scene at church, nativity scene at home. Like what we do at church and what we do at home are meant to be in sync, and not and it, the other way around. Another very interesting detail is not only uh, four purple candles. So we have three purple and one pink. Mm -hmm. So the rose candle, uh, of course, because Advent parallels uh, Lent here, you've got a rose Sunday. Partway through a, a fasting season, you take a pause, sort of break from the fast. But then also the idea is once you start fasting again after that, you've upped the ante. Your fast is now more serious. I'm now like... Game face on, ready to charge toward whatever the feast is that I'm preparing for. Iowa Catholic Radio, be not afraid. Support for Iowa Catholic Radio comes from Fitness by Design, your neighborhood fitness studio. Located in Des Moines, offering PH or fitness classes, private and semi-private training, beamer, and massage. Learn more at fitnessbydesigndm.com, 515-770-3844. Support for Iowa Catholic Radio comes from Caldwell Parish Funeral Home and Crematory. Caldwell Parish offers services that are unique to the individual while following the Catholic funeral rites. Caldwell Parish Funeral Home and Crematory, Des Moines' only Catholic-owned and operated funeral home. Support for Iowa Catholic Radio provided by Mercy College of Health Sciences, where you can chart your course for more. Mercy College provides unparalleled clinical rotations, hands-on learning, accelerated education, and flexible schedules. Since 1899, Mercy College has been transforming students into healthcare professionals. Guided by Catholic values, our faculty put classroom theory into practice. Students are prepared for roles in service and leadership throughout their own careers. Learn more at mchs.edu. Mercy College of Health Sciences. mchs.edu. Support for Iowa Catholic Radio comes from Westgate Dental, offering cosmetic, family, implant, and general dentistry. Located at 1073rd Street, Suite 1 in West Des Moines, just behind Dowling Catholic High School. Learn more at westgatedentalia.com. Thank you to our business partner, McDonald Imaging Solutions. Family-owned, Marty and his son, Caleb McDonald, offered branded corporate apparel, logoed promotional products, marketing solutions, and printed items. Learn more at McDonaldImagingSolutions.com. Welcome back to Be Not Afraid, Iowa Catholic Radio, December the 12th. December the 12th. And a majestic <laughs> celebration for our Latino Hispanic community in our in our diocese at the metro area and also in other other parishes around our diocese as well. And, and looking a little bit far from uh, tamales, atole, and all those pellegrinos and addresses as well, and uh, with all respect, uh, uh, 
significant paraphernalia to mm -hmm. honoring the Blessed Virgin Mary, why is it crucial to don't miss the liturgical part of Our Lady of Guadalupe celebration? You know, when the church um, adds a feast to her calendar or, or sort of um, a, a, adopts into the liturgy a practice already existent or, 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 or part of like a local tradition, but makes it part of the universal church, it becomes part of the universal church. So the way the church prays on the Feast of Our Lady of Guadalupe is not only important to Hispanics, Hispanic Americans, or his, uh, exclusively, Hispanic it, it it's it's it, it it's reflective of the church's teaching for the whole church, and is especially important for us in the Americas, um, because uh, as you, pastor of Our Lady of the Americas, know well, yeah. in the in 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 the visions of Guadalupe, Our Lady dedicated herself to us in a very special way, and so we have. And continue to dedicate ourselves to her. And this is a very notorious clarification, especially to don uh, create an, uh, an a separate celebration for uh, cultural reasons. It's more ecclesiastical celebration that looking for the common good and the spirit of community through the eyes present, obviously, from Our Lady of Guadalupe. Yeah, you know, I, like the goal here should not be, and I, I've worked hard at my parish this way. I know you have to at yours, um, that Our Lady of Guadalupe is the Hispanic celebration. The church celebrates Our Lady of Guadalupe. This is an important feast day for Hispanics, just like St. Patrick's Day remains an important feast day for Irish people. And so just like they have mass at the cathedral before the big parade, so we have mass at the cathedral and the big parade. I mean, like it's it, so so but but but, you know. Uh, you would be very welcome to the St. Patrick's Day Parade uh, in March, Father, and 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 so all of our families should feel very very welcome uh, at at our Guadalupe celebrations as well. So let us move into the Eucharistic prayer, especially in the preface for this time, and had been using the same: "The Lord be with you, without your hearts." Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Right. So for our listeners, the preface is that part. Of the, of the Mass that the priest says right after that dialogue Father just recited for us, right? The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. And, um, and the preface typically best distills the content of, the, of what we're celebrating, the, the sort of the feast of the day. Even uh, during ordinary time, the prefaces are the prayers that are most closely aligned say, with the readings, not necessarily the collect and the, and the post-communion. And so these, these are important prayers. If you want to understand what the church wants on a Sunday or on a feast day, look at the preface. And so we have the preface of Our Lady of Guadalupe. And this is very important because um, most of the other feasts of Our Lady just have a, a generic thing about Mary. It's not specific. But the church adopted into her prayer this very specific prayer to God in celebration of the visions at the Tepeyac because it has something important to say to the whole church. So, so the, the preface always begins, the, the, the priest picks up from where we leave off. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For in your great generosity, in your great goodness, you desired that, the, that your mother, under the title of Guadalupe, okay would would be in a special way uh, our mother refuge our refuge and, and our lady, lady right and ours the the emphasis here is on the the our. the the personal here the, our lady our refuge um alive presence uh, is present and alive in the history of your people so mary is not dead mary is alive Perfect. and she lives in your people under this title our lady of guadalupe she as a messenger of the truth and a right sign of maternal love. Right. So she 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 is both messenger. So she is, in a certain sense, an apostle, one who's been sent. She's a witness, a, t a, test, a testifier to Jesus' resurrection and a sign of maternal love, of the love that's, that, that only can come from a mother. She gives us compassion, helps, and defends us. The, the the bringer of compassion, our constant help and defense, and and that's a that that that's language drawn up from the Americas, the help and defense. And today she invites us 
for reconciliation between us, between ourselves and between us as well, and proclaim the gospel of her son. So, so, so what Mary's role is in the church today as, as witness of the resurrection is to invite everyone to reconciliation with, with one another. And so by that sort of act of reconciliation to testify to the gospel of Jesus. To live in, in, to flourish our earth, our lands, and fraternity and peace. So, 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 so Mary is tied to the land, which is why she appears as a daughter yeah. of the land, and she rules from heaven over all of it. She is the, the sort of the eternal mother now, right? The new Eve who gives birth to all those part of the new creation. So, you know, I, I think this is significant as an Anglo who has received this feast from my Hispanic brothers and sisters, right? What, what I find most significant and most, what I wouldn't have otherwise, maybe, right? There's an earthy quality to this prayer. Mary's part, not just of the Holy Land, half a world away, but has set foot on our land. And she stands as mother of our people because she's first one of our people. And she, she has uh, an evangelical role, a testifying role, which first witnessed to the resurrection of Jesus when she appeared at Guadalupe and still testifies to the resurrection of Jesus at, in as much as she is loved by his people today. Be not afraid, Iowa Catholic Radio. Support for Iowa Catholic Radio comes from Laser Home Services. Catholic owned and operated, Laser Home Services has been providing Central Iowa with electric, plumbing, heating, and cooling services since 2001. Learn more at laserhomeservices.com. Join the celebration and help grow the faith at Iowa Catholic Radio's Dinner in December, Friday, December 8th at 6 p.m. at the Embassy Suites downtown, featuring a keynote from EWTN's Dr. David Anders, Called to Communion, How a Committed Calvinist Ended Up Inviting People into Communion with the Catholic Church. Tickets are still just $75. Don't miss this year's Dinner in December and a special announcement from Iowa Catholic Radio. To reserve your seat at the table, visit iowacatholicradio.com. Support for Iowa Catholic Radio is provided by CTO. Your support has helped thousands of students attend our Catholic schools. CTOIowa.org. At CTO, the bottom line, it's for the kids and their future. Support for Iowa Catholic Radio comes from A New Look Exteriors, an Anderson certified contractor providing custom window installations, roofing, siding, gutters, concrete, and more to help give your home a new look. Learn more at anewlookexteriors.com. Welcome back to Be Not Afraid, Iowa Catholic Radio. In the same context, the Advent season, we back again to the in this second Sunday, about the first reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah, chapter 40, verses 1 to 5, 9 to 11. Comfort, give comfort to my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and proclaim to her that her service is at an end, her guilt is expiated. Indeed, she is received from the hand of the Lord double for all her sins. A voice cries out, in the desert, prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the wasteland the highway for our God. Every valley shall be filled in, every mountain and hill shall be made low. The rugged land shall be made a plain, the rough country a broad valley. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all peoples shall see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Go up on high to a high mountain, Zion, herald of glad tidings. Cry out at the top of your voice, Jerusalem, herald of good news. Fear not to cry out and say to the cities of Judah, Here is your God. Here comes with power. Here comes with power the Lord God, who rules by his strong arm. Here is his reward with him, his recompense before him. Like a shepherd, he feeds his flock. In his arms, he gathers the lambs, carrying them in his bosom and leading the ewes with care. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Wow. So this is, you know, among one of the more famous of the prophecies of Isaiah. You've got all of the imagery that we attach to this time of year. You've got the words repeated by the Baptist. Uh, a, a voice cries out in the desert, and prepare the way of the Lord. Yeah. Uh, you've got the, the, the prophecy of the mountain. 
um, the, 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 the cry to Jerusalem, the, the language of Jerusalem um, uh, in maternal terms, right, in feminine terms, um, you've, you've got everything that makes up what comes to be Christmas. And uh, Father, in the first in the in the in the, in the first paragraph, uh, comfort give comfort to my people. Second one, a voice a voice cries out in the desert, prepare the way of the Lord. And the third paragraph, go up into the high mountain. It's three different contexts, you know. In in the first one is is an exclamation, I need help, and please comfort us, console us, and this is an a. Uh, an extend, extended voice for the current world that has been asking, Lord, be merciful with us. We need you with us. You know, it's all, the whole creation, the human being currently has been asking our Savior, we need your help. I think one of the things, um, one of the important things about I, I, uh, Isaiah and specifically these passages from Isaiah, right, is the the church has read these texts for a long time. And so she sort of sorted how to organize them over a long time in the prophets. The most common kind of narrative device that gets used is the prophet speaks for God. So he'll say, thus says the Lord, blah, 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 blah. And then there's some kind of reply that's like on behalf of the people, or maybe just in the voice of the prophet himself. Right. But so there's a kind of a dialogue that's going on, but the dialogue doesn't make much sense if you don't have the other side of it. And so, and, and so part of what's going on here is, 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 is the cry from the prophet comfort, give comfort to my people says your God speak tenderly to Jerusalem for all the things. So the, the prophet sort of making the cry to God. And then, then there's a pause where there's a reply and then a voice cries out. Uh, Exactly. It's exactly. like the voice is interrupting what's already going on. And, and that's important because that's the way John the Baptist seems to, to step onto the scene. There's right. all this other stuff happening uh-huh. that, that looks mostly like it's about the nation, about the country. And, and then a voice interrupts them all. And, and, and broke the silence, broke the indifference to say, prepare the way of the Lord. Cry out, prepare the way of the Lord. And, and what looks at the beginning, like it might just be uh, an incidental character who wouldn't have anything to do in this, in this battle going on between the Romans and the Herods and the, uh, the Herodians and the, and the Sadducees, the people that make up sort of the social thing. This crazy person outside of town shouting, and he winds up being so important, the king has to have him killed. Right. Right. So 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 none of this looks the way it first appears. And that's what the prophecy is trying to recall for us, is that this is something new is happening here and it's not anything like you expected to happen. And after that, in a theological context, go up onto the high mountain, Zion, herald of glad tidings. It's very interesting. Then go to prayer. Go to prayer to the mountain. I mean symbolize the necessity to ask him. The highest. It's it's significant. Um, the the use of the imperative here, right? Go. Oh, okay. Go. So so now here, uh, um, uh, uh, the the one the voice has changed again here. Now right? this is God's reply. So this isn't the voice who's crying in the wilderness. This is God saying, "Go up on the high mountain, Zion, herald of glad tidings." That's like her title, right? And 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 tell the world what I've done for you. Huh? So so. So the church utilizes this imperative uh, ourselves at the end of every Mass. Go, church, New Jerusalem. Go, herald of glad tidings, and announce the good things that I've done for you. Wow. It's like commitment, you know? Well, the other time this happens, the other time the imperative form is used in this very direct way in the liturgy, right, is at the offertory. Orate fratres, orate hermanos, pray, friends, that pray this, but sister. it really, but like, if we were going to do this grammatically, right, it would be pray, exclamation point, friends, comma. <laughs> oh, wow. Right? Like, it's, 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 it's meant with that kind of force. It's like a general having roused an army. Um, so now, now we got to do what we've come here to do. And that's, that's precisely what we're being invited to during these Advent readings, right? You, like, you've, you've been waiting for something. You've been, you're on the bench. Let me in, coach. Let me in. Let me in. <laughs> All right, son, it's time to go in. in. Very interesting. And at the same time, 
song is a little bit, uh, I don't know if the word appropriate is to your scaring, but it's more to be aware, you know, like, like a, okay, okay, be ready, but not relax yourself. So be ready for it. So the prophet invited us to take an special actions in this preparation, in this second reading, and a particular preparation. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I think the preparation is, is what the, the voice in the wilderness was crying to, right? So, so if you're, it's, in, it's significant that the voice in the wilderness calls for repentance before you're sent out to say anything to anybody. Wow. So, 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 which is why we get John the Baptist. Before to point at somebody. <laughs> it's why we get John the you. Baptist before we get Jesus. Yeah, you're right. This is important, right? right. And, and and the question comes up later in Jesus' own life, right? Why do why do why do John's disciples fast while your disciples don't fast? John's disciples fasted in preparation for me. And wow. so we fast, sort of as John's disciples during this part of the year. We 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 hold ourselves accountable, we try and straighten our lives out, we go to confession, we do all the things in anticipation of the one who's gonna come at Christmas, who's not Santa or the Christmas goose, but Jesus. Father, could you please send us with your blessing? May the passion of the Lord Jesus, whose coming we wait, the merits and prayers of the Blessed Virgin, St. Joseph, and all the saints, grant that whatever good you do, suffering you endure, heal you all your sins, help you grow in holiness, and bring you to everlasting life, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Be not afraid. Are you a Catholic ready? Be not afraid. Jesus is on the way to encounter you. Go forward and be not afraid. Support for Iowa Catholic Radio and Be Not Afraid comes from Ball Team, your builder of all faith-based construction needs. Learn more at buildwithball.com.